All right, back in action. So I got a new one for you today. Got a, another nerdy one. It's about time, eh? It's been a while. So uh, I've been working on uh, energy consumption number three. And the reason why I've been working on that one is because uh, the first two, while they were good and they came to some good conclusions and stuff, um, that was actually kind of dangerous. That guy was turning and he de definitely was in this guy, this guy's blind spot, or I guess I was, I was in his blind spot because of that van there. That was kind of not the best thing to do there. All right, so this is uh, energy consumption number three. So number one and two were pretty good. We drew a lot of conclusions from those. Uh, we determined some things. But uh, the data set really was no good because, um, and the reason why, well, the reason why it was no good is, is because uh, uh, really, I think if I remember correctly, those videos I did in the fall, and it was quite cold. And well, obviously I don't drive in the cold very much on the bike. Uh, I just happened to do the videos around that time. So uh, I think the energy consumption we found in those two videos, uh, are much much higher than what we're gonna find in this video because this video has data from the summer like right now I think it's uh, 26 or 27 degrees uh, I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit but uh, Fahrenheit doesn't really make any sense anyway so what's the point of uh, mentioning it all right so welcome to the calculation portion of the video so as uh, previous as uh, current subscribers would uh, probably know, or I guess uh, long time subscribers would know, I, I previously did two videos called Energy Consumption 1 and 2, of course. And this is the third one. And this data right at the top here is from the first two videos. And I took that data, I recorded all that stuff uh, last fall. So of course, uh, the temperature back, back in the fall is uh, pretty chilly. So... Uh, I expect to see some pretty significant differences in the data we collect here because uh, now it's uh, really warm. And right off the bat you can see that in the winter, or fall sorry, uh, the energy consumption of the bike is higher than it is in the summer. You can see in the summer here we're in the mid 70s most of the time. Sometimes we hit a 60 there. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a single one over 80. Whereas in the fall here uh, we have, we're, we're mid to high 80s, 90s a lot of the time uh, for watt hours per kilometer. So it's uh, a pretty significant difference there. Another interesting thing to point out here is that the, uh, on longer rides in particular, like this one here, for example, and uh, this one here, uh, the energy consumption is lower. And I think that's just due to the fact that I'm, I'm probably just more doing more cruising uh, on the longer rides and a little less uh, hard cornering and uh, hard acceleration and stuff like I am on the shorter rides. Uh, whoops. So this column here is temperature, of course, and I didn't really record the temperature last fall, I just kind of guessed at it, um, so chilly or warm, but this time I, uh, I put down these numbers here. Uh, these aren't real real uh, weather uh, data numbers or anything like that. Uh, they're just an average of what I think the bike went through on that particular day. So if I drive into work in the morning at uh, and it's 15 degrees out, and then I drive home in the evening and it's 25, well then I just put down 20 because the average of the two, you know, roughly 20 degrees is what the bike experienced over the day when it was uh, moving down the road. So yeah, those are just kind of uh, very broad estimates, but it gives you a a bit of an idea of what uh, what was going on there. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, the average of the winter, or I guess the fall, this should be, this should be fall. Uh, the fall uh, average, whoops, whoops. The fall average uh, is about 90 watt hours per kilometer there, whereas the summer average is uh, about 74. So there's a pretty significant difference there. And like I said, it's based pretty much 100% on temperature. There's nothing else really going on there. It's uh, really interesting. Uh, one thing I noticed recently is that the, the power factor of my battery charger is pretty terrible. It's actually it's 0.75-ish uh, when it's uh, going full bore 
plugged into the wall, so it's not the best. I, I'm going to be looking into getting a, uh, a another charger, uh, mostly just as a backup, to be honest. But uh, if I can find one with a better power factor than that, that'd be great. Uh, another thing that I did in the previous video is that I calculated the estimated range of the bike based on the battery pack capacity and the energy consumption of the bike. Now, unfortunately, it wasn't really quite adding up last time, and it's actually not adding up again this time, so I think I'm still missing something. But uh, if I take, for example, uh, the 70 amp hours, the 70 amp hour capacity of the batteries, and multiply it by the approximate voltage of the battery pack, um, that's my battery pack capacity in watt hours, uh, 5460, approximately. It's, it's, it's very approximate. Uh, if I divide this now by my average summer power consumption, which is 74 ish over here, I get a range of 74 kilometers. Now, I know this still is not correct because uh, I know the bike can do more than 100 kilometers because, well, I've, I've done rides more than 100 kilometers, so there's no way this number is right. So the charger efficiency has to play into this somehow. And, well, don't pay attention to this power factor uh, uh, value here. Power factor and efficiency are two different things. But if I, if I guess uh, an efficiency of 85% of the battery charger, and I, I add that on as well, divide that, I, I still only get a range of about 90 kilometers. So I think I'm s still missing something here. Maybe uh, maybe the accuracy of that wall meter is not the greatest. Um, I'm going to do some more digging here, try to figure out what why it's not adding up here. I, I know the bike can go further than this calculation suggests, so it's 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 interesting that usually your theory numbers are on the opposite end. Uh, they're, they're usually uh, like uh, way more optimistic than real life, but in this case, it's the absolute other way around. The real life. Uh, real life uh, shows that it can go further than the theory shows, so something's definitely not adding up here. Uh, anyway, another interesting fact is that I converted the bike to lithium at uh, about 28,500 kilometers, and the bike's now at 35,000, uh, almost, getting there. Uh, so the bike uh, with the lithium pack has about 6,500 on it, and I figure by the end of this summer it'll probably have 10,000 on it. So uh, yeah, I drive it a lot. I drive it pretty much every day. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a true biker, so I drive it pretty much every day. Anyway, uh, that's the data. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.